Nikola Torbett. I'm no expert on nuclear weapons. But I wanted to talk to you tonight about what was driving me to walk with these folks um, onto, or at least very near to, Vandenberg Air Force Base. And it was longing. Uh, it was longing to see fulfilled the promise for which I believe we are all created, which is to live in kinship and mutual service with other human beings and with all living beings on this planet. That potential is being held hostage. It's being held hostage in a number of ways. Nuclear weapons are only one. I believe it is not possible for us to stand shoulder to shoulder and toe to toe and heart to heart with all human beings on this planet when some of us have grenades in our back pockets. It is not possible to be in genuine relationship when some of us have the potential to buy influence that others do not have the potential to obtain. It is not possible to be in genuine human relationship when some of us benefit from a litany of suffering and death all around the world. As I was preparing for the trial, um, I did a lot of research um, on the Marshall Islands and what has happened there. And I wanted to tell you the story just of one little boy as a way of encapsulating um, some of what I understand is the experience on Ebai, which is the island to which most of the Marshallese have been relocated. There are now 13,000 people living on 88 acres in squalid, slum-like conditions. And what moved me especially about this little boy is that he's eight years old and he goes almost every day by boat to the gate to the military base. And he begs for clean water for his family because his family no longer has access to clean water. The water treatment plants are broken and there is no money to fix them. His father works for the base and has been caught numerous times trying to smuggle fresh food that was destined for the Americans who are working there to his family back on Ebai because there is very little access to fresh food. Uh, the, the indigenous livelihood of the people there was the fishing industry, which now has been destroyed because the U.S. military has jurisdiction over the lagoon. And there are checkpoints as workers are exiting the base to go back to Ebi to make sure that they are not taking food that was destined for Americans back to the Marshallese. It's not possible for us to be in mutual human relationship with the Marshallese people when we benefit from that kind of suffering. And we do benefit as much as we may not want to. There is some degree to which our safety is predicated on their suffering. That's what I want to end. That's what I want to see end. And I believe that as a follower of that uh, great subversive resistor of empire, Jesus of Nazareth, that part of my call is to be kicking out from under me the things, the systemic things that bolster my supreme position. So I was excited, actually, uh, by the conversation that we were having over email um, during the last week. It was really quite remarkable how many of us had decided that we did not feel willing to pay the fine that we knew was going to be assigned to us. Um, we do not want to pay into a system that is as fundamentally broken as the U.S. justice system. Um, my friend here and I are active in Oakland uh, working against police brutality and racial profiling, which is a huge issue in this country. And I'm just not willing to support a criminal justice system that is based on that. So we were willing to go to jail. And I admit I have very mixed feelings tonight. I feel as if the government has done a dodge and weave maneuver on us. 
But I wanted to describe to you briefly before I end the experience of driving down here today. Uh, I took a turn at the driving, and as I was doing that, the three people, other people in the car were all sleeping. And I had this sense of what a privilege it was to be driving these people down here. And I also had this explosion, and maybe this is something like what you experienced, John, that night, of joy that is unlike anything that I experience in my day-to-day -day life. And I think that joy comes from recognizing that this opportunity is enabling me to say, I will not be cowed. I will not allow my relationships to be sabotaged by this government and by a set of systems that prevent me from being in genuine mutual service with other people. And there's freedom in that. There is such freedom in that. There is freedom to become the human community that we are destined to become. So if you've never done civil resistance or civil disobedience, I really want to encourage you to do it. It's, it's an experience unlike any that I have anywhere else in my life. Such joy. So although we will apparently not be going to jail this time, we will be back because there's that song that goes, those who believe in freedom cannot rest. Those who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. So we'll be back and I hope to see you there. Thanks.